Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. I'm the instructor of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course, the general overview of applications of big data. We're doing sports analytics or informatics, and we're doing in the other sports, meaning other than baseball. And we're going to look at, um, in this lesson, lesson three of unit three, uh, National Football League, American Football, and American Basketball, NBA. And when we look at that, we'll find that, that the discussion is qualitative and focuses on spatial visualization of, of, of displaying what's happening as a function of position on the, on the uh, playing field for these two games. And we saw, we've seen this, that uh, this data can either be used in two sort of actually related ways. One is giving you a good feeling as to what's going on in the, uh, in the 3D world where these games are played. And the other is taking a slightly deeper look at that data and predicting what's going to happen. Or how you should actually play the game so that the result is more in your favor. Okay, so here we have our first example of spatial visualization, where we have a set of hexagons, where the color of the hexagon represents the completion percentage going up to dark red for 100% completion, and these light green colors is the worst case. The size of the symbol represents the frequency with which the uh, ball is thrown by the quarterback to this particular location. So he throws it backwards. Uh, here or forwards here about the same uh, fraction of times. Uh, here the uh, we have an orange, which is a reasonable completion rate, but not nearly as good as the completion rate here. The completion rate here on the uh, right hand side is actually a little better than the completion rate on the left hand side. And of course here we have the um, the long throws, where the well, that's the thing that makes the game exciting, and uh, they tend to be near the edge of the field. To, uh, for obvious reasons, and um, these are quite small, and they're lightly colored. They were not thrown so often, and they don't have such a great percentage uh, completion rate. So this is visualizes for you if you were a quarterback or a coach, uh, where you might want to throw to get a certain expectation of success. And that, of course, is folded into the state of the game, the number of downs, how many yards to go, and so on. All right, and here's the same type of data where the color represents the completions percentage. Here we have the high, com high percentages backwards. And here we have a high one forward on the right. And here we have other one, I mean, this highish completion is is backwards and a little bit forwards, and then we have the edge of the field uh, with a lot of long throws and a scatter of long throws throughout the whole field. And um, the dots represent, these are now no longer symbols, these are just dots representing individual, um, um, small, uh, in, uh, individual uh, throws. So well, this gives you another, this is another way of looking at the same type of uh, information about how often, this is for all passes in 2012. So actually these are not individual throws, these are just uh, average throws in that particular small spatial region. Um, here we have the same type of data again with, um, uh, fractions of, uh, of times they're chosen. So you can see the typical throw is actually uh, around in not uh, about uh, seven yards forward. And then we have some tiny ones in the center of the field long, and um, some non-trivial number. Uh, so if you add up these numbers here, they're gonna end up around 10%. So 10% throws for more than 20 yards, dominantly on the sides. And it must be that uh, we have slightly more on the right-hand side, because maybe that's right-handed quarterbacks prefer to throw down, that, that I don't know. As we've noted, the right-hand side tends to be somewhat more successful and, um, than the uh, left-hand side. And now here, everything is represents uh, 
probability of actually choosing this throw. It does not actually say uh, the successes. So this is spatial visualization for American football. Here's an interesting uh, talk I found from a computer science department at the University of Illinois at uh, Champaign, Urbana Champaign. And um, it's obviously, uh, that's a top class school, so these are must be top class people. And what's interesting is that they are, they're using what I pointed out. You're on, you can take video, and here you can do, you can identify what's going on from the video. Here we have the people identified. And you can translate those into movements. And um, then you can take these movements on a play and try to do uh, machine learning to classify movements into types of types of play. And um, so that's what they're trying to do here. They're trying to find automatically the types of plays that are used in the, uh, in the I don't know if this is college sports or, um, or, national, or uh, national Football League. Illinois is a great computer science department. It's not a great American football team. It's not terrible either. Okay, so now we come to similar discussion for the National Basketball uh, Conference, American Conference. And um, this comes from the same talk, which has this overview of sports and analytics from the MIT conference. And this takes a particular player who's meant to be a very good shooter, Jose Calderon. And here we have a plot where the um, size represents the frequency. Here we have low to high frequency. And here we have the efficiency, the percentage of success. And um, red is above average, and uh, green is uh, not so good. And you're gonna see there's some rather clear systematics. Here we have this line here must be the three-point line. And here this fellow is uh, pretty successful in this range here. Just outside the three-point line, he's 40 to 50% success. Inside there, he's somewhat higher, because it's a shorter shot. He's very good near the uh, hoop. But he's not so good shooting from the side here, 40% green and uh, yellow around here. So this fellow you would use from this region or, or here, but you wouldn't use him from the edge. Here is Martel Webster, who is nearly, not nearly as good at three pointers, significantly lower um, percentage. Really excellent from the from the left, uh, not so good from the middle, and not well actually weak from the middle, and not so good from the right. So he has rather very different uh, statistics from uh, Calderon. Here we have a, yet a, a third uh, player, game extremely weak as three pointers, very strong here. These mid range. Um, Side shots. He doesn't actually go shoot much from the from the center here, and he's not so good from the hoop. Although not as bad as the previous one, I think. So this tells you where the players should try to you should try to arrange plays to position the players in their comfort zone where they're just super shooters. That's presumably the purpose of this. Here we have a great player, LeBron James. Uh, is possibly the, I gather, the currently most valuable player in the NBA. He's a very good three point shooter here, not so good on the right. He's extremely good from the middle. And I remember the previous person was wonderful here and not so good here. This fellow is really incredible in this uh, region here. And also excellent from the left, but uh, not so good here. So it is really kind of clear systematics. And here is a game where we have um, each dot here, it tells you actually how many attempts there are in each dot, it's 20 field goal attempts. And um, you can see where all the attempts are made from. You have a lot from just outside the three point range. Uh, obviously not so many here, places like here because if you're gonna shoot from me, you might as well just drop back a foot and shoot from the three-point, outside the three-point boundary. 
And then of course a lot from here where it's a much closer than the three point range and it's still far ish from the hoop. So you're not going to get blocked and uh, defended as effectively as you are in this region here. And of course here you're right at the hoop and you have a different style of play. And again, we have these interesting edge shoots, which are very popular type of shooting. Um, here's a, um, a measure of efficiency, where again, the uh, um, size represents the number of attempts at a given location, with the large size, many attempts. And the points go from reddish for the highest except uh, highest percentage um, success to blue, which is the worst. And you can see this region here is not good, presumably very well defended. And here for the three points, uh, there may be the way they've done the coloring, because you're getting three points, you automatically get more marks than if you shot from a two from a two point range. Anyway, this is a huge number of uh, amount of data showing very clear systematics as to where it's uh, where is a good time to where is a good place to shoot from. So this is all examples of spatial visualization, of trying to uh, explain where your in this case either your in the NFL we were saying where the uh, quarterback should throw the ball. Here we're saying where the basketball player should shoot the ball from. So this is, I say, these shot maps from the 26 to 2011 data. And um, it, it is sort of summarizes the whole um, tendency in shot attempts and points per attempt. And as we've explained, the larger the size of the square, Indicated data where uh, many field guards are attempted, and the smaller squares where there are fewer attempts. And the color tells you the um, percentage acceptance. And blue is bad, and orange and red are very good. That discussion there on that slide was for the previous two shot, the previous two pictures. So here we do the same type of picture. Uh, but we do it for individual players, and we have four different players here. And um, you can see they are uh, here's Steve Nash, Ray Allen, I don't, Kobe Bryant, I know, Dirk Nowitzki, I just don't know these three players here. Here is Bryant, who's a superstar, and uh, you can see again these players are. Reasonably different, namely this player here, Ray Allen, doesn't have many shoot shots at all from this mid-range region. Whereas Kobe has quite a few and actually reasonably successful. Here, the greens and the yellows are going to be the, uh, the yellows is the higher than the green. So he has reasonable thing here, he has some blues which are bad in probabilities. And of course here, he have three pointers from this uh, side area here, quite successfully. And so anyway, here's a, here's a fellow, uh, this is Nomotsky, terrible from the side, hardly does it at all. Pretty wonderful from the center here, which is better than Kobe. In fact, he's by far the best from the center of these four people. And a very solid player from this mid-range band. So you know, these just point out that here's obviously a three-point shooter, very little inside. And quite a lot from the outside, and very few here from the edge. Unlike this fellow here, which has a lot from the edge. All right, the final picture here just describes that uh, slide. And uh, these have uh, high ranges, then they're good from far away. And they do that in pretty different ways. And. Um, as we saw, Nowatsky was this fellow who's incredibly good from mid range. And um, Ray Allen was a fellow who was good from the very corners, the left and right corner, and Steve Nash rarely shot from those particular corners. So it really shows out striking differences between different players. Quite what this translates to is not so obvious to me because it doesn't translate into a, 
presumably tells you how you have to arrange the ball to be passed between players. <coughs> and where players should aim to get to, because uh, uh, they want to get to a place where they have a good success. Of course, they probably know where they have good success, and they tend to go there automatically. So this is not probably new data for a lot of the players, but it's still interesting to see it uh, displayed. But this is visualization. We're using spatial visualization to plot out uh, the plays and the game as a function of position. 